quando essas estrelas né, caem, aí as equipes também desaparecem. É uma coisa engraçada. Parece um teatro, né, uma peça de teatro que tem um grande, uh, uh, uma grande estrela. E se o, 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 a estrela não estiver bem, o time também não vai bem. Essa parte uma vez e, e me seguiram 500 gotitos. Pois eu estava, estavam preparados. Alguém lhe, lhe, lhe habría dicho. Fui com minha senhora e com minha hija. Eu me acuerdo que lhe dije, lhe dije a mim, mate o mas não toque na alma porque não juego mais em Napoli. How can a mere sport command so much money, exert such influence, demand the passion of so many? Football is a history of clubs and national teams, of shared triumphs and disappointments. A team game. But always great players will outshine others. They are the superstars. I believe in the association of the superstar with what he does, if it's really within the field, se ele decide, se ele define um jogo, se ele faz a diferença dentro entre os outros jogadores. If you take the money away, then a lot of the footballers uh, would still be playing football anyway, so money has nothing to, to do with it. C'est vrai que c'est c'est même beaucoup de pression, c'est quelque chose qui uh, qui fait partie uh, qui fait partie du football qui fait partie du football aujourd'hui. Il faut il faut l'accepter avec uh, avec ce que cela comporte, le bien ou le mal. Credo che poi uno si fa anche l'abitudine quello, di riuscire comunque a dividere la, la tua carriera dalla, dalla tua vita privata, solo così puoi resistere. I believe every kid wants to play football and uh, if you are there you, you also want to belong and be a star. In the summer of 2001 Zinedine Zidane became the first $60 million man when he was transferred from Juventus to Real Madrid. Four years earlier, Ronaldo had caused the sensation with his record $30 million transfer. By the time of Zidane's transfer to Real, the players in the French and Brazilian squads at France 98 had been involved in transfer deals worth over $750 million. Yet the final between the two teams was billed as a contest between Zidane and Ronaldo. La pression a toujours été sur les épaules de tous les joueurs, surtout avant une grande compétition. Pas beaucoup de personnes voyaient nous voir, nous voyaient arriver très loin. Nous on y a cru, on a tout mis de notre côté pour pour faire quelque chose de bien. On l'a fait, on a réussi. Such is the status of the superstar in modern football that Ronaldo's illness before the game and his indifferent display during it is blamed for Brazil's 3-0 defeat. It seemed that at the end of the 20th century, the cult of the highly paid superstar was all that mattered in football. How different it had been at the start of the century. The world's first football rivalry between Scotland and England brought with it the creation of the first superstars. Scotland dominated the early encounters between the two. And when the Scottish Football Association refused to sanction professionalism after their English counterparts had in 1885, it was the start of the first wave of player migration as players went in search of a better living. English clubs had representatives who were known as agents who came up and attempted to suborn 
Scottish players and get them to go south. And there was a magazine called Scottish Sport, which was very irate at this, and said, who amongst the Scots would be so base as to deliver a fellow Scot to slavery for base gold? The answer was quite a lot, actually, quite a lot of them. By the start of the 20th century, there was a thriving transfer market, though unlike today, the players saw none of the proceeds, unless separate negotiations were conducted illegally under the table. In 1905, English international Alf Common was transferred from Sunderland to Middlesbrough for a world record 1,000 pounds. With the help of Common, Middlesbrough managed to avoid relegation to the second division. Their investment had paid off. Wages for the players remained low and were little more than the factory workers who paid to watch them every week. They were capped. Contracts were binding. And a players' union formed in 1907 by the Manchester United and Wales captain Billy Meredith was largely ineffectual. Leading players like Meredith had to cash in on their stardom in other ways. Around the world, professionals remained largely from poor backgrounds, though by the 1920s, that was beginning to change. On a commencé à comprendre que ça pouvait atteindre à toutes les classes sociales, parce qu'il y avait la, la, une, 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 une partie de la société plus élevée qui trouvait que leurs enfants ou leurs fils ne devaient pas faire du professionnalisme. Le professionnaliste était dans les études, ou être avocat, ou être ingénieur, ou médecin, enfin, c'était la mentalité. En 1924, l'Europe avait le premier glimpse de South American footballers à the Paris Olympics de that année. Pour many Européens, it was aussi leur premier glimpse de black player, et ils étaient dazzled par les skills de José Andrade as Uruguay won gold. Such was Andrade's fame that he stayed behind in Paris for a month and was often seen in the company of the illustrious Josephine Baker. In Brazil, the biggest star of 1920s football was Palestano striker Arthur Friedenreich. The 1,329 goals he scored in a career spanning four decades is disputed, but if true, is a world record unlikely ever to be beaten. This is the only one of those goals caught on film for posterity. In Europe, Giuseppe Miazza had emerged as the most successful footballer on the continent. He led Italy to victory in both the 1934 and 1938 World Cups, though his reputation off the pitch matched his exploits on it. Avesse poi avuto una testa un po' più eh, a posto, perché faceva una vita da, 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 da morire, eh. insomma, eh, lui era mai a casa, era sempre in giro, e non era sposato, eh. però, però era bravo come il sole. Eh. Like many talented players, Miazza asked for and received preferential treatment. He was the only player in the Italian national team allowed to smoke. And at his club, Inter, it was only his sensational scoring record that bailed him out of many tricky situations. He had a habit of drinking the night before games and once woke up just half an hour before kickoff. Fortuna che abitavo vicino all'arena e sono arrivato lì tutto trafelato. Pozzani che mi guardava, i giocatori, mancavano 5 minuti per entrare in campo, io ero esperto nel cambiarmi, in 5 minuti mi sono cambiato, mi sono presentato in campo, naturalmente sentivo i dirigenti che dicevano, beh, dopo raggiamo i conti e vedremo come è andata, dove va, cosa ha fatto questo qui, dove è stato fino adesso. Per fortuna mia, durante i primi minuti per la partita lì, segnai tre gol, <laughs> On 
the 23rd of January, 1939, Vienna awoke to the news that its most celebrated football star had died an untimely death at the age of 35. Matthias Schindler, the son of poor Czech immigrants to Austria, is still regarded as the greatest footballer the country has ever produced. Schindler, würde ich sagen, ist durch diesen frühen Tod zum, zum endgültigen Mythos in dieser Stadt und zur Legende in dieser Stadt geworden. Es ist eine Stadt, wo Genies früh vollendet sind und in jungen Jahren sterben. Die Legende um Mozart, die Legende um Schubert und ähnliches. Schindler reiht sich hervorragend in diese, in diese Reihe der legendenhaften Mythologisierungen des jung verstorbenen Genies. Schindler war der Darling der Austrian Sportspress und der Café Society in Vienna. His fame derived from being a key member of the Austrian Wunder team of the early 1930s. Nicknamed the man of paper due to his slight build, he didn't like training, smoked, drank, was a compulsive gambler and had a string of relationships with prostitutes. When Germany annexed Austria in March 1938, Schindler refused to play for the new Greater Germany team and retired from football. Wurde schlussendlich als uh, die Gestapo einen Geheimakt über ihn anlegt als uh, Sozialdemokrat, als Judenfreund und als uh, tschechischer Nationalist bezeichnet. Uh, etwas, was in der Zeit um 1938 als überaus uh, subversiv gefährlich und eigentlich als uh, Voraussetzung für ein späteres Todesurteil angesehen werden kann. Schindler's death in 1939 was shrouded in mystery. After being found dead with a prostitute called Camilla Castagnola, the investigation conducted by the Nazis in just two days concluded they had died from accidental gas poisoning. Mysteriously, all the documents from the investigation soon disappeared. Immer wieder wurde auch die These von Selbstmord oder Doppelselbstmord, uh, vor allem von den Sportjournalisten, uh, aus dieser Zeit uh, vertreten. Schindler s ní chodil a ona se nějak dozvěděla, víte, že Schindler si chtěl nechat. Jo. Tak ona se mu chtěla mstít jo, a pochopeně tak ho pozvala na rozloučenou, abych to řekl správně mě, na rozloučenou, víte, kdy, kde mu nalila nějaké jed do láhve, no a tu láhve přinesla, ale vypila ji ona napřed a pak on. Andere Möglichkeiten wären banalerweise ein, ein äh, Racheakt aus dem Zuhältermilieu, aus dem Umkreis eben äh, jenes äh, amerika maxl für den äh, Camilla Castagnola gearbeitet hatte. Äh, es wäre auch denkbar, dass es sich schlicht und einfach um einen simplen und banalen Unfalltod äh, handelt. The real cause of his death will never be known. But that just adds to the legend that is Matthias Schindler. At his funeral, 15,000 Viennese lined the streets to pay their respects to a man who in the early 1930s had helped make Austria the most admired team in the world. In post-war football, the status of players continued to rise. In 1947, Tommy Lawton was transferred to Notts County for a world record 20,000 pounds. But wages in England were still restricted to 12 pounds a week. The wealth of later years was still a far off dream. Well, there's certainly money in some sports, but I can only speak for cricket and football. In those games, there's certainly not a fortune to be made in a hurry. But still, we're players and not financiers. And so long as we get an enjoyable game once or twice a week, well, why worry? In the Cold War era, 
communist countries attempted to turn football stars into model citizens. Many of the players were officially in the armed forces. Some achieved high rank. Like the galloping major, Ferenc Pushkas. In 1981, Pushkas returned to Hungary, having spent 25 years in exile. His life had come full circle. From communist hero to traitorous villain after he fled Hungary in 1956 to his rehabilitation in 1981. <laughs> A második pedig az, hogy csapatkapitánya volt ennek a csapatnak, és hát abban az időben azért nem úgy volt, hogy válasszák azt, hogy ki legyen csapatkapitány, hanem azért általában a legjobb futbalista volt mindig a csapatkapitány, akinek a irányítását azt el kellett tudni fogadni. Compared to the ordinary citizen, the wages earned by Puskas were not substantially higher. But being a star player and being regarded as a symbol of the communist regime brought with it numerous other benefits. Jó fia volt, volt egy játékos társ, aki nagyon szeretett. Batyinak hívták, ő volt a kispesben a középátvéd. Nagyon beteg lett, tüdőbeteg. Nem volt elég pénze. Volt a magyar honvédelmi miniszter akkoriban, öcsi ritkán vette fel az egyenruhát. Fölöltözött őrnagyi egyenruhájába, Ott állt a honvédelmi miniszter előszobájába, vagy ült, öt nagykövet, tíz tábornok. Öcsi bement, kinyitott az ajtót, belépett a honvédelmi miniszter szobájába, azt mondta, ide figyeljen, a patyiviska beteg, sörülösen kórházba kell vinni, külön ágyas szoba a honvédelmi, honvéd kórházba. Megértette? Tisztelget, elment, patyiviska meggyógyult. Pushkas was a player whose extraordinary capability with his left foot dazzled defences. In 84 games for Hungary, he scored 83 goals. That's a record that no one in international football has ever beaten. An injury in the first round of the 1954 World Cup meant it was a below par Pushkas who played against West Germany in the final. There are a number of candidates for the best player never to win a World Cup winner's medal, but Pushkas came the closest. His late equaliser in the final was disallowed, and gone was his chance. In the acrimonious aftermath of the Hungarian uprising, Pushkas was accused of being unpatriotic for not returning to Hungary after a foreign tour. He was also falsely charged with having embezzled funds on a tour to South America. He had fled to Vienna in October 1956 before eventually making his way to Spain, where he signed for Real Madrid in 1958, marking the beginning of a brilliant new career in Spain. The best player I've had, I've been 12 years with him, has been Di Stefano, that's no doubt about it. Luego, y luego he tenido a Puskas también, dos, dos jugadores de élite, grandísimos jugadores de fútbol, que eso es muy difícil, es como tener dos Pelés, dos Maradonas en, en, un, en un equipo, eso, eso fue fabuloso. By the time Puskas had joined Real, the Spaniards had already won three consecutive European Cups. Their inspiration, an Argentine who had left his country in 1949 after a player strike and who had spent four years playing in a rebel league in Colombia. Alfredo Di Stefano is still regarded by many who saw him play as the greatest footballer of all time. Y cuando era pequeño, que me iba a decir que, 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 tirara, que pateara con la derecha y que pateara con la izquierda. Y eso es lo que vale, la, la cosecha que uno realiza es la cosecha de la calle. No, el aprendizaje de la calle, la universidad de la calle. Twice voted European Footballer of the Year, there was talk of Di Stefano being a tyrant. You had to accept his authority or you were out. Como siempre voy a manifestar, si no es por tus compañeros, tú no vas a estar ahí arriba. 
Cuando te dan el trofeo, decís gracias. Pero gracias a mis compañeros también. Everyone present at Hamden Park in Glasgow at the Real Madrid Eintracht Frankfurt European Cup final in 1960 will say they were privileged to have been at the greatest game of football ever played. Real Madrid took command. The great De Stefano leveled the score. Again, the ball was in the German danger zone. This time it was secured by the Hungarian Puskas. He made no mistake. A good pass found a brilliant Puskas. The Hungarian marvel made it 5-1. Puskas scored four, and Di Stefano claimed a hat-trick as Real won 7-3 to win a fifth consecutive European Cup. I've had four entrenadores and with the four I've won the Copa of Europe and I've been champion of the league. It wasn't very important the entrenador. It was more important the players that there were. The social status of footballers was not lost on some of the more unscrupulous members of the public. In 1963, whilst on a tour to Venezuela, Di Stefano was kidnapped. He wasn't kept for long. The kidnappers got their publicity, but realized any harm to Di Stefano would hurt them more than help them. Well, no one is detained by force. Me sugiero, me, reconozco que me trataron bien, por eso estoy aquí sentado, y que ellos hicieron algo por su país, que no sé si lo habrán conseguido o no lo consiguieron, pero que yo indiscutiblemente esta gente la, la, la disculpo porque tenían su misión, ¿no? In the 1960s, few could question the right of Pele to be called the king of football. Eu sempre falei e faço às vezes uma comparação porque o dom que Beethoven teve, não é um músico com cinco anos, o dom que Miguel Ángel teve para pintar, isso foi uma coisa que Deus escolheu e escolheu Pelé para jogar futebol. acho que o futebol é um, um, um formador né, de, de, de homens, porque disciplina, é saúde, e principalmente nos países pobres, como o nosso. Porque os países uh, mais avançados, as crianças começam na escola, como na Europa, nos Estados Unidos, no Japão. Primeiro as crianças vão na escola, vão no colégio, aí vão para a faculdade, e aí eles se formam 
profissionais de qualquer esporte. No Brasil, nos lugares mais pobres, não. O garoto ele busca a sua vida já no futebol. At the 1958 World Cup, a 17-year-old Pele was instrumental in Brazil's triumph. 